Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now this is a bit of an unusual start to my videos because usually I'm stood outside. It's quite windy out there so we're going to get a lot of wind noise. So I just thought I'll start my uh, vlog off in the car. Now this video is all about my long term review of the F33 series. Now the the new G23 uh, series is like pretty much upon us now. It'll be launched in about six months time from now like uh, March next year so I thought it's a right opportunity for me to give you guys my long-term review on my 320d so what I'm gonna do now is step outside go around the car and do some cinematics I guess and then we'll uh, kick off the review so in terms of styling upgrades what I've done to the front end of the car is I've put on these gloss black grills on any BMW I think they make a massive improvement over the chrome grills and it just makes the front end look a little bit more aggressive. I really wanted to put on the M Performance splitter but I didn't really want to get caught out on like say speed bumps and what have you so what I've done is the bottom end of the M Sport bumper I've just done the canards uh, gloss black I've had them wrapped. Along the side I'll put the M Performance decal and moving around the back I put on a subtle gloss black lip. And the reason I've done these changes to the car is I just don't want it looking too corporate. I do like my cars and I do like them to be slightly uh, unique compared to others out there. So, you know, there are loads of them that have the full M Performance kit on. Mine's a halfway house between the full M Performance kit and to the way I've just done mine. And I quite like it the way it looks. Guys, before I start my long-term review on the F33 series, if you're new to the channel or a regular viewer but you've not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. So in terms of, like, say, engines, uh, the 3 Series is offered in various format, pretty much one for anybody out there who's in the market for a 3 Series. So my particular 3 Series is the 320D M Sport Plus, and essentially what that means is that it comes with a B47 2.0-litre turbo engine producing 190 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque, and that power, guys, it's pretty adequate for the type of car that this is. So this car will do 0 to 60 in about seven seconds, and it'll go all the way onto a top speed of around about 150 miles an hour. And it does feel as quick as those numbers kind of suggest. I mean, when you're on the motorway, for example, you can put your foot down. The car won't really need to kick down a gear purely because it's got that massive 400 newton meters of torque, and it will just effortlessly just glide you along. And when you're at a set of traffic lights, you know, you can whack the car into sports mode, put the gearbox into sport as well, and just floor it, and it will keep up with quite a number of cars. Obviously not your hyper hatches, but pretty much 80% of the cars on the road. I've never really found it lacking in performance, if I'm honest with you. Even when I'm coming out my 140 or I'm jumping into this, I don't feel like, oh, I need more power, you know, it's it's adequate for what it is and the way it delivers that power, it's fairly refined. So in terms of running costs, MPG, that kind of thing, uh, the car's got a 55 litre tank, to fill it up is going to cost you anything between 65 and 70 pounds, and on the full tank combined cycle you'll easily get anything up to about 500 miles. I generally have been getting, in terms of MPG, just over 40 miles per gallon um, over the last kind of 9,000 miles that I've, I've driven in this car. That's pretty good for real life economy. I mean, I did a trip recently to uh, Tenby, South Wales. The car was crammed with like luggage in the back. I had like, you know, the family with me, two kids, uh, my wife, and we drove down, we drove around Tenby, and we drove all the way back. And you know, that was all done on just over, literally, just over half a tank of fuel. Um, you know, that's a testament to know how frugal the 320d is obviously if power is your kind of thing and you want you know an all-rounder you can go for the 330 or the 335d which obviously give you a way better blend of performance and economy compared to the 320d but for that you know i've got my 140 euro to give me that kind of a kick so um the 320d is just brilliant for me and again i think i've kind of mentioned it before there's a three series for everyone out there so if you know, you want a, a petrol, uh, high-powered petrol, you go for the 340i. If you want to go for, you know, a lower-powered petrol, uh, but economy is your thing, then you go for, like, say, the 318i, which I believe is a three-cylinder engine, or the 330i, 
which is a 2 litre with about 250 horsepower petrol turbo. Um, so like I say, there's one there for pretty much everybody out there. Now this particular 3 Series you can get with the adaptive suspension which was a first I believe on any 3 Series. My car doesn't have it. It rides fairly well on the kind of passive setup but I don't think it rides as good as it can you know if it had the adaptive suspension. Now I've got that on my M140i and you know driving the car back to back with and without there is a no noticeable difference. A lot of people say oh you can't you know you can't notice anything but trust me you can. But having said that the passive suspension does do a pretty damn good job about going about its business and like going through the corners. You know there's not a huge amount of body roll uh, but it's just not as comfortable as I wish that it could be. The M Sport Plus, now what that means is that it comes with a nice kind of body kit, so it's a little bit lower, etc., compared to your kind of SE models. Now, the plus element of it is that it comes with 19 inch alloy wheels, and this one's got the 403 M design alloy wheels. It comes with the sun protection and glass, it comes with the bigger brakes, and the Harman Kardon and sound system, and probably a few other bits and pieces which you don't normally get on the M Sport. In terms of what it's like behind the wheel, the seat for example is really supportive, you can really sort of bring in these bolsters, you can get really low in the seating position. I've not really sat in any BMW where I've kind of struggled to get like a good sort of driving position, you know, that's, it's BMW at the end of the day, they, that's what they do, they make a, a proper driver focused car and this is no exception. So my car's fitted with the brilliant ZF Auto Gearbox, the 8 speed, I've never really found it like catching me out, not being in the right gear at any sort of moment in time, it's always in the right gear um, and you don't really get any jerkiness like the way you do in like certain uh, double clutch systems. Like all modern cars you don't really get a kind of a steering feel, um, it's, it's quite numb if I'm honest with you and I guess that's partially because this car has got the um, run flat tyres on it which kind of kill the whole kind of driving experience. I mean, just going through like a corner here, you know, yeah, it's going to go around it. It's not going to fall over or anything. There's like hardly any body roll in, in this car. And that, again, you know, it's it's engaging to drive. The steering sort of just lets it down a little bit, I guess. But, you know, if you put on some non-run flat tyres, I'm sure you can, like, improve that steering feel. So in terms of reliability guys, I've not had an issue with this 320D, neither did I have any issues with my 520D which had the same engine uh, as that was the LCI 2014 model car. So it came with the same V47 engine and the Grumia 8 speed ZF gearbox, not a single mechanical issue. So uh, mechanically I personally think that these cars are fairly robust. Um, rattles and stuff like that, again the sort of dash design not really had any rattles. I know some people have had like say the went area kind of rattling but me personally I've not had any issues. The only thing I did have an issue with was the rubber seals around all four doors. Um, very similar to the issue that I had on my 140i but I had it on this car before and the dealership was able to sort that out. Basically what they've done is, you can see from this clip away, they put this kind of a tape that runs along all the, um, the door seals. Uh, quite a sort of an easy fix with the car I guess and it's totally eliminated like the rattles so uh, it's a bit annoying but you know the dealership was able to help me out and sort it out uh, and that's you know a credit to them uh, the other thing if your car is out of warranty and you've got those kind of rattles you can use something called uh, gummy fledge I think it's called here's, here's how you spell it you can say sort of google it and find out uh, if it's any good So guys, I hope you found this video useful, informative and entertaining to a degree. Informative is key for my videos, I don't like just making videos just for the sake of like just doing a video. Guys, be sure to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more car related content. If you're on Instagram, don't forget to check me out and also on Facebook. 
check out BMW M140 or Shadow Edition Club. A great club, lots of information, lots of knowledge in there. And also we're almost approaching a thousand members and in recognition of that the group is providing some club discounts and raffles and what have you. So yeah, be sure to check that out. Guys, hopefully I'll see you on my next one. Take care. Bye.